In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can optimize your Mac to make your life easier, more productive, and just flat out more enjoyable. Because let's be honest, our devices are supposed to be helping us not holding us back. And I'm excited to share some of my favorite Mac settings that can do just that. Let's go ahead and start off with something that you use every day, the dock. Let's go ahead and get rid of the apps that are on the bottom of your toolbar that you don't use. Now, there are two ways that you can do this, just how I did there, when you can drag and drop it off, or you can go ahead and right click it, and you can show the options and you can remove from the dock. One hour later. All right, so I've got a lot cleaned off on my bar, which is really good. The next thing you can do is depending on your vision, you can make the bar bigger and smaller and you can do that by moving your mouse over the middle line there and you can click and hold and you can drag up or drag down. So depending on how big you want that, that's as small as it can go, or, or you can go as big as you want depending on your preference. Now, if you have an app that keeps opening up when you restart your computer, which can be really annoying because depending on the app, it can take a few seconds for it to open up. If you wanna check that and see why the app keeps opening, you can also right click it and you can go to options and you can see that it is open at login. So if you have that checked right there, you can go ahead and double check and make sure and you go in there and see, yes, it is checked to open at login. Now let's get into the settings for your dock. In order to do that, you're gonna go ahead and right click on the dock and then you can go ahead and do dock settings. Now there's a ton of settings in here that you can look at. First being the position of your dock on the screen. Depending on your screen size and your real estate, you might not like it at the bottom like I do. So you can change this to the right or the left. So it'll pop up there and it'll give you more space on the top and the bottom, which is really nice. Now the next thing that can really help people out is minimizing your windows and how it does it. Right now we have what's called the genie effect. When you open up your notes or something like that or any app, it will do that swoosh going up and down. Well, to kind of speed things up a little bit, you can do what's called scale effect. And that when you open up the app, it just opens up and it just shuts down. So it's nice that it's not a whole you know, show when it goes down and it can speed your computer up a little bit. Now for me, this is something that I often do by accident. When you double click on a Windows title bar, it will make it larger or smaller. And again, I always do it and I'm like, what just happened? It's like you double click on it, you're like, whoa, why did that get as big as, as the screen? I didn't want that. And you come over here if you're not too sure, and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna put it back down to where it needs to go. Well, that's this option right here. Double click the zoom. Right here, you can change it to fill and we'll show you exactly what fill looks like when you do that. Boom, same thing, but it doesn't take up the whole screen. And you can double click it and it puts it back down to size. Again, if you don't know about these settings, this might annoy you <laughs> when you're going to try to do something. We saw the zoom and then the minimize if you wanna get it off there. That's nice, I like that because you don't have to come all the way over here and click on the green to go, to go smaller or the line to go down, the yellow line to, to minimize. You can just double click on the screen. Or if you don't like that at all, you can literally have it do nothing and you know, no problems, no misclicks, and you're good to go. Now there are lots of times where I have a number of apps open up and a number of screens primarily on Safari or on Chrome. And when you minimize those, they appear on the right side here. And depending on how many windows you have opened up, as you can see here, it just starts piling up. If you wanna minimize that so you don't see it, you can actually have your minimize windows into the application icon. So when you turn that on, you'll notice that when you open up your apps and you go to minimize them, they will go right behind the app themselves. So no longer will they appear over here on the right side of the bar, and you don't have to look at that or keep maximizing your space of your dock down below. So that's something that you can adjust and uh, it, it just keeps things a lot more pretty. The next thing I wanna show you, maybe you have it set up and you don't realize or defaulted, is something called Hot Corners. And at this point we have it set up that at the bottom right corner is a quick note. If you move your mouse to the bottom corner, it will pop up and you can open up to do a quick note. And this has many different ways and different options that you can set things up depending on how much you use them. For me, it isn't something I really use all that much. And there are times where I'm like, what is that? What, what is that that just keeps popping up down in the corner there? What I don't understand that. Well, that's because it defaulted to Quick Note. 
And, you know, sometimes you get a misclick and it comes up or it just annoys you. You can actually do one of two things. Well, first, you can just clear it off completely. You can actually assign a keystroke to this. For example, we can do command and then you would click on the note down at the bottom and that will allow it to come up. Or you could do a series of, you can do control and then command and then boom, you're good to go. So if that does that and you click on it, that will now activate by holding down those two buttons and then coming over here. If you don't hold down those two buttons when you're doing it, it's not gonna come up. So that is a nice little thing to do if you want it, or you can shut it off completely and then that way you don't have it pop up at all and you know, no misclicks. Now let's go ahead and move to the top of the screen, the menu bar. If you're on a laptop, this is a must. You gotta turn on show percentage left on your battery. Now to turn that on under system settings, you're gonna go ahead and select control center and have to scroll over to battery and then toggle to show that percentage on. That's pretty simple and it saves you from having in the wonder exactly what the percentage is left instead of looking at that little tiny bar. Also in the control center, you can set what you see up here in the top right of the bar. Now, there are different apps that do pop up here as you're using them, but there are a number of them that you could actually remove if you want. If you're not someone that goes in the Wi-Fi a whole lot, you can get rid of it. For me, I like to do show in the menu bar for Bluetooth because I'm constantly connecting, disconnecting certain things. So going right into that is actually saves a little bit of time and that's just my personal choice. And other things like when it's active, focus will pop up there, but you have the ability to control whether that shows up or not. The other thing that you can do is if you scroll down to the bottom, you have the ability to get rid of other things like I don't wanna see Siri in the bar. And uh, if you're someone that doesn't use Spotlight a whole lot, you can get rid of it there as well. Do you use or know about any of these tips so far? Am I helping at all? <laughs> Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment down below if you have a cool trick that I haven't mentioned. Oh, and if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna see more videos, ring that notification bell. Next is the trackpad settings. Now, I use a trackpad for my desktop as well, and you can also adjust your traditional mouse settings here, and I'll show you that in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into system settings, and then we are gonna jump down to trackpad, and we'll go over mouse in a second here. All right, so first things first, you have three tabs here. You've got your point and click section, where you can adjust your tracking speed, your click, you have a quiet click, and then you have a force click with haptic feedback. Now, the one thing that I actually tried to do was the tap to click. And let me tell you, this did not work for me because I like to hover my hand over my trackpad, whether it's on the laptop or here at my desk while I'm editing. And having that just tap, that's not for me, but if that's something that you like, here's where you can go ahead and set that up and it can save you a little bit of time instead of having to click the mouse every time. The next tab you see here is scroll and zoom. Some people don't like the way that Apple scrolls, the natural scrolling, like you scroll down to go up or you scroll down up to go down. Some people don't like that. So you can actually turn that off because it defaults to turned on. So in that case, when you scroll up, it goes up. When you want to scroll down, it goes down. For me, I'm used to it already, so I just know that if I wanna go up, I scroll down, but th that is all preference. So here's where you can control that, and then boom, you're set up. So let's go ahead and jump over to mouse, and I have my mouse here, and again, you can do your tracking speed here. Natural scrolling is the same thing. I've got a scroll wheel on my mouse, and if I wanna go ahead and scroll up, I have to scroll down. If I wanna scroll down, I have to scroll up on the mouse. You can adjust that there and go back to your normal scrolling. Next is something everyone should do whether you have a new or old machine. Set up the finder how you want it to be. Okay, so let's jump into finder here and I'm gonna show you a whole better way to set this up and get rid of things that you don't want. You have a whole list of things that are defaulted here on your sidebar. Now, in order to adjust this, you're gonna come over to Finder and you're gonna click on Settings, and then you open up with your general settings on here, and we're gonna go ahead and click over to Sidebar. So I get rid of a lot of things that I don't use. I already have AirDrop turned off, and I'll tell you why I don't like it in the sidebar there. We don't need to know what's on my Mac, or movies, or music, or pictures. Get rid of Cloud Drive, Shared, and oh, recent tags. I, I've never used tags while I'm using my machine. So look at that. It's already nice and cleaned up already. So if you're someone that likes to look at your icons and sometimes you can't find what you're looking for, change that sucker to listicle. It's so much better and easier to go through. 
And for the purposes of this video, I actually turned off a couple functions here. If you right click on that little name bar up there, date modified, as well as file size. And this way you know when it was created, as well as the file size, and it's easier to kind of keep track of what you're looking for and how you can organize certain things. Now on the top here, you can actually adjust what you see on this bar as well. And again, I don't use any of these things. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, and then we're gonna go to customize the toolbar. So once you're in here, there's things that you can get rid of by just clicking and dragging. I never use groups. Uh, again, I never use tags. And this right here, uh, which is the three dots for action, I, I never ever use that. Now once you have that cleaned up, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and add airdrop. So now once you have that dropped up there, you can click on the file and you can go ahead and I can airdrop it to my device if I'm moving it that way. Now you can also do your share file here, which you also have the ability to edit the extensions on here. And there are lots of things that I don't use on here. I don't need the reading list. We don't really need airdrop in there, but that's fine. Copy link, don't need it. I don't need notes, don't need photos. Actually, we'll add that to photos. And other things down here, reminders, simulator, contact suggestions, uh, free form. I don't need any of those things on there. That will keep that nice and clean. So once we close that and you go back into here, it's just your minimum things that you can do and send off to. It just keeps it so much cleaner. Now the search bar up here searches all your folders. If I'm in here and I'm looking at a different folder or I have one of my other folders up, for example, my clips for videos, this can get pretty extensive. So I wanna specifically limit the range of this search to each specific folder. And in order to do that, you can go up into your finder, go back into the settings. In this instance, we're gonna go ahead and go over to advanced. And right down here at the bottom, when performing a search, not search this Mac, but we just wanna search this current folder. And then that way, boom, if you wanna look for something, it will specifically look in this one folder. And that way you're not going all over the place and not looking where you want certain things. Have you ever been so deep in the folders that you're not quite sure where you're at? Well, there's a really cool way to see that very quickly. If you go up into view, you can go ahead and do show path bar. Now that will put it down here at the bottom and you can easily click to where you need to go and it will take you back to where you were and skip around and, and move as freely as you want. Now, in conjunction with showing where you're at on the files there, if you go back into view, you can do a show status bar and that will not let you know how many items you have in the folder and how much space you have left available on your machine. Now, I don't know about you, but when you always open Finder, it starts up on your recents. And I'm usually clicking off and going into something that's a little bit more important to me. And I learned you can actually adjust this. So if you go ahead and go into Finder and go into your settings, you actually have the ability to open up a new Finder window and it can start where you like. For example, I like to have this go into my folder and then that way I can close this. And when I come back in, it will open up right to my folder and I can go ahead and get to work and start working on my videos. Now, depending on how old your machine is, the recents folder can get pretty bogged down. And in this instance, I, I don't really don't need it to show any more than a few days. And you can actually set up your own new recents folder because it is a smart folder. So in order to do that, you can go over to file, new smart folder. And in this instance, we do wanna go through everything on this Mac. Now, once you go ahead and hit the plus button, we want to change this to last open date. And then again, you can change this to five days or seven days, you know, not 58 days. Now, I don't want any apps to show up in here because it's just not that important. You can actually change that by going up to your plus minus. If you hit option, you'll see it changes to three dots. Once you click on that, we can go up here and say none of the following are true. And then we can do kind and then it's going to be applications. And then boom, that's gone. All right, so now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and hit save, and I'm gonna retitle this Recents, and we're gonna make sure that the toggle switch is on to set the sidebar, and once we hit save, and we close this, our new Recents is set up, and we can go ahead and remove from dock on the old Recents, and we are all set. Okay, that was a lot. Now, did any of these help? Any finder tricks that you think I missed, or that you wanna see? Feel free to leave a comment down below. Have you ever gotten this message? Yeah, well, I use a lot of browsers too, so uh, I'm used to it. 
if you want to adjust it and you realize I don't want that as my default browser, you actually have the ability to go in and change that. So you're going to go up here to your Apple system settings, and then we're going to go down to a very familiar spot, the desktop and dock area. And I wanted to show this later in the video because it's part of the browser portion. And down here you have default web browser and you can actually pick which web browser that you want. The next I think is really cool. If you access the same website all the time and you just want to get there quick, under Safari, if you are in there, you actually have the ability to save this as an icon in your dock. And in order to do that, you're going to go up to file and you're going to go ahead and add the dock. Now this is super nice because you can change it to whatever you want. And once you drop it down there, boom, you're ready to go. Now Chrome is a little bit different. Uh, it's not as pretty, but it does work. Once you're in the window, if you wanna go ahead and jump into an app, you can go ahead and take that and you can actually drag it down. But it does need to go to the right side here of the dock and then boom. It's not as pretty, doesn't have the cool logo on there, but it will allow you to get there a little bit quicker. Now, let's say you are in Safari in the private uh, browser for um, reasons. Well, there's a way to protect prying eyes. Now, once you have a regular Safari window open, you can come back down here and you can open a private window. Now, for example, let's say you are in YouTube. It doesn't really matter, but uh, if you want to go ahead and lock this out for prying eyes, you do have the ability to do that. Now, the first thing you got to make sure is if under Safari and under your settings, you actually have private browsing uh, password required to lock tabs clicked on on there. And you will see that, boom, this is automatically locked. So if you minimize that and you come over here and you want to open up a new private window, and you wanna lock this before you walk away from your computer, if you come into window, you can go ahead and lock all of your private windows. So if you minimize that, and then someone comes along and says, ooh, I wonder what they're looking for. Let me go to my private browsing. Oh, it's locked. Now, a few of these will work on the iPhone as well. Would you like to see a video kinda like this, but on the iPhone? Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're thinking about getting a new Apple device, go ahead and check out this video right here on the new products that could be coming in 2025. Also, if you're new here and you like what you see on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you won't miss future videos. See ya.